Emmanth, I'm excited to be back in Mobile World Congress Barcelona with you to get uh, brought up to speed on the latest and greatest that you all are doing around XR. It's been so exciting to follow the trajectory over the years. So to start, maybe just remind us, what's, what's that vision long term for Qualcomm has in mind for, for bringing this into market and scaling it out? Well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Very, very excited to speak with you. So we, we really see from Qualcomm, there are two categories of devices. One is the virtual reality, which is transforming into mixed reality. Uh, and there we have the XR2 plus Gen2 platform. Uh, and we see that like with like improving uh, graphics and resolution. And then you have the AR uh, glasses, which is powered by our AR2 Gen1. Initially, we see these glasses are more as a companion to our phone or a puck or a watch eventually transforming into the next generation compute device uh, where you could have integrated 5G uh, into the uh, AR glasses. So you laid out the vision that Qualcomm has, but I want to talk a little bit about the challenges here. And a lot of it has to do with delivering a continuously quality experience despite variability in the network conditions. So just help me understand that. Yeah, so for example, when you have AR glasses that's uh, connected to your 5G powered phone, uh, we know that the 5G experiences are going to be varying, the throughputs are going to be fluctuating, the network load conditions, the RF conditions are going to be changing. So what's going to be very important is for the applications to be able to dynamically adapt to these changing RF conditions, and we make that happen with our on-device APIs. Our on-device APIs provide uh, real up-to-date information uh, about the network and allow applications to dynamically change. We also have a suite of APIs and modem optimization that's you know, that's continuously optimizing to deliver the lowest latency experiences. And one of the things you're showing on the stand is this idea of dynamic distributed compute. Can you take us through that? Sure. Uh, you know, when you have very good 5G you know, connectivity, uh, we take some of the heavy uh, workload processing, such as uh, graphics rendering, and we have it sort of rendered from the cloud. Uh, and, but however, when your network conditions are not so good, we uh, use dynamic distributed compute to bring some of that compute to the phone. Uh, of course, the trade-offs are when you essentially run it on the cloud, you burn less battery. You also take advantage of the higher power graphics. And when you bring the compute over to the, to the phone, you have more battery consumption on the phone. Uh, and you also take advantage of some of the graphics on the phone. So, and uh, you also deliver a very seamless end user experience uh, for the end user. So regardless of network conditions, they are seeing, uh, you know, they have a very seamless experience. I also wanted to talk about this uh, collaboration that you all are doing with Hololive and Ericsson. Can you just take us through what that is? Uh, yeah, so Ericsson uh, it has sort of provided us with the uh, GNodeB and then the core network and Hololite uh, has the streaming application from the cloud. So we work with both of the partners to essentially uh, bring uh, to light uh, all of our APIs to kind of showcase that with the real application and also to implement dynamic distributed compute. So now we have a working system that's live over the air. Yeah, and so back to that uh, idea of the vision for the XR business, uh, replacing handsets or augmenting handsets with glasses or wearables as a compute platform. Where do you feel like we are on that trajectory? Yeah, so uh, maybe, you know, like right now where we are is, you know, we have uh, like devices such as the Ray-Ban uh, glasses from Meta, right? Love them. You love them? So, and I think, so the next step in that would essentially be to add more displays. Uh, and you have glasses like these. So these are like uh, AR2 Gen 1 powered reference designs that, you know, that Qualcomm has. So these are a good companion to the phone, and so in the next couple of years, you'll start seeing more devices in the market which have capabilities uh, you know, with like integrated displays and so on. Eventually, longer term, uh, we will uh, see this to be a standalone 5G integrated device that may not need a companion device that talks directly to the network. It's an exciting outlook. I really appreciate you sharing it with our audience. Thank you, thank you very much, Sean. Thanks for having me. Thank you.